Well, first of all, James, uh, I wanted to thank you because uh, I don't know if you know, maybe you don't, but I'm from Coahuila, actually. I was raised in Coahuila. Um, I used to live in the capital, Saltillo. But this uh, series, that's why it captivated my attention, first of all. And first, I wanted to know what made you uh, take it as a project. It's very, as you know, it's a very, uh, it was hidden for a long time. And why did you pick this especially strong, uh, sad story to make a series about? Yeah. Well, thank you, and, and yeah, wow, that's intense you know, coming from Coahuila and watching it. I know that must have been a rough journey. A lot of our crew comes from Coahuila, um, a lot. So it was a it was a it was a shared journey for sure, and a lot of their experience went into the show. Um, yeah, I, I came across the story from Ginger Thompson's reporting a few years ago. Uh, Ginger's an amazing Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who now is the chief of reporters at ProPublica. And she spent two years putting together an oral history of voices of the, mainly of the victims, but not, uh, not all of them, uh, her interviewees were victims. Some were perpetrators and some were victims and perpetrators in a way. And that's part of what the show is about. And she let their voices come through. And uh, that was the first time I felt the kind of generosity in the, that journalistic space, which is often so taken up with the news of the moment and the headlines and the violence you know, uh, and, and you can really hear the voices of people, the real people. And she also made a connection that I thought was really important. And that is that it is we in the United States who are in, in fact helping produce this violence. We're, we're, we're equally culpable for what happens. Uh, and, right now. Go ahead. No, sorry, I, I interrupted you. Uh, it makes me wonder because it was a difficult task to investigate all of this because uh, it was, uh, something like the town almost disappear at all. People, everything, we just have these houses, but there, it seems that there was nobody to tell the story and you do, you did a, an, an awesome job trying to recreate all these lives and uh, all the people that was uh, dead and everything. It's very captivating to me in a good way. And, um, I just wanted to ask you, what was the, the most difficult part to, to do this series, the challenges? You know, one challenge I'll tell you, um, and it was a challenge that I gave myself, but also to my, my writers, Monica Revilla and Fernando Nachor, the entire production team, and even the studio, even Netflix. You know, when we got together in Mexico City, it's already a couple of years ago to start our writer's room uh, together. You know, you do what you call a Bible for a TV show, right? You, you lay out all the outlines for each episode and you write all the character backstories. And we spent a month, two months doing that. And I sent it to the studio and they were very into it. They were so supportive, um, but they didn't notice, or if they did, they didn't mention it at first that I outlined only the first five of the six episodes. So we left episode six, the last episode, just blank. Yes. And uh, I did that on purpose so that the studio, the executives, and even my fellow writers had no idea what was going to happen to our characters in episode six, who would live and who would die. And I did that because I wanted everybody to be in love with our characters for who they were, uh, not for whether or not they were going to become victims or part of some bigger story. We had to, we had to fall in love with them and be in their lives uh, before we, we allowed the events to take over. So it was very difficult because by the end of the, uh, of the day, I had to write episode six. And that meant I had to finally decide on people's fates. And by then they were real people to me. These fictional characters had become real. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's mesmerizing, but it's sad at the same time. And you know, it's been 10 years since this horrible massacre. And the thing is that 10 years after, it's, still happening how do you see mexico in this this way you know i'm i'm weirdly hopeful about what's happening in mexico even though there's so many challenges and i and and, and so many headwinds and part of that is the experience of living and working there as a newcomer as somebody who really started this process and still ends it not knowing that much so my opinions are very superficial <laughs> yes <laughs> they really are that said um 
I think there's, uh, there's two kinds of violence that we do deal with in, in Agenda. There's the violence, obviously, of things like the massacre that took place there. Uh, but there's also the violence of the silence that descends upon people who, who are too scared to speak or too indifferent. And I'm finding more and more that silence is breaking. And I hope SOMOS is part of the, the way we can start these conversations afresh. But uh, to me, that's the most hopeful thing, just get the conversation going and break the silence. Well, as someone from Coahuila, I have, and from Mexico, actually, I have to thank you for bringing light to this uh, lost cases and lost causes sometimes that uh, my town, my country uh, suffers. And I just want you to, to ask, lastly, but not least, are you thinking to get more um, cases from Mexico and do something again? Or do you just want to take another route this time? I, you know, I think we're going to, uh, uh, let's put it this way, finishing Somos uh, was such an epic journey. And I'm, I'm happy that it's an open-ended one. I think there are so many stories to tell still in Mexico. And not, not simply the kind of stories that we were telling, which necessarily center the events like what happened in the agenda, the violence, but also, as you saw, if you watch the series, there's a lot of humor. There's a lot of, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of just everything. There's a lot of life. And I hope that the series breaks open uh, a more mainstream because it's made for everybody. It's not an artsy new, you know, series. Um, but the, uh, access to these kinds of stories too from Mexico. But yeah, there's a lot more to do. Excellent. Lastly, but I have to go, but uh, did you like some food from Coahuila? We have oh. good food there. <laughs> oh man, uh, uh, as you can, well, you can't because of the framing. So you can't tell how much I liked it. Um, we, had, we had so many cast members and, uh, and even um, a crew who were from Coahuila. So there was a lot of discussion uh, about the barbacoa and about the, the cheese and about, of course, what we didn't have, because we were shooting in Durango, we did not have the drive-through tecate, uh, oh. which I'm very happy about, because then I, you, you, I'd be up to here. <laughs> yes, I understand. And I have to thank you again. Thanks for bringing this case into light. And I hope that people get uh, connected with all the stories that you're telling. Thank you very much, James. Uh, thank you. Gracias a ti. I really appreciate it. A big abrazo. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.